Good afternoon, Kevin. How are you? I am doing great. Thank you so much. Uh, very glad to be here with you. Oh, I was just going to say, so great to connect with you again. We were just trying to work out how many years it's been, but um, but here we are. Here we are. Maybe maybe half a decade since we spoke in person, but I know we've been connected in between since. So, uh, and always always great to be here talking with you. Yes, and I'm excited for you to share your wisdom with this audience that I'm building on this new podcast. Um, and I like to say that you know when we go through challenges, whether they're massive legal challenges or life challenges, which often go hand in hand, um, they're the biggest potential for transformation in our life. So I just wanted to ask first up, you know, if you'll share a time in your life when you've been under excess stress or had one of these extreme challenges um, and how you got through that. Yes. I, I, I've got a couple of examples I'd like to share with you. Thank the you. first one is one of those situations where things in life happen to you and, you know, it, it kind of knocks you uh, off balance. I, I think back to um, when I was in the UK, maybe 2007, a long time ago. Now, I thought everything was going in a great direction. I had a great career working as a financial executive um, at Airbus, you know, helping to make wings for the aircraft. Uh, I was engaged, you know, very shortly due to, to get married. You know, health was great. Things were going in a great direction. And then uh, one day, you know, completely out of the blue, my uh, fiance, you know, took her engagement ring off, put it in my hand and said, I don't want to marry you. And it was one of those moments that we ever had that where like my whole head was was pounding and I couldn't couldn't even I never saw this coming. You know, this wasn't ever on the agenda. And th that was the first thing that happened. But during that week, I think on my way into work, some guy had run into the back of my car when I got to work. Uh, Airbus had you know, reallocated the work to Spain. So this big project that I was actually there for to do has gone. And so now, and because of that, like the financial situation, because we would be splitting up, mm. you know, and the lack of uh, work coming through, I was in this position where I wasn't even able to keep this house that I worked so hard on and building. So it felt like one of those moments where everything was going wrong. Everything had, had hit the fan. Now, back then I didn't have any resources to, to deal with. It. I didn't really know how to deal with it other than go and sit at the pub and drown in my uh, sorrows into pint after pint. Oh. And I think after a while of doing this, um, one of my one of my friends at the time, Matt, he, now he wasn't trained in coaching or anything like that. He was a, he was a long distance um, truck driver. And in one of these conversations at the pub, he said to me, hey, he said, hey, Kev, I had a situation like this. And my dad said something to me. He said, you know, in five years time, you can look back on this moment and realize it was a turning point in your life. It's up to you. Which way do you want to turn? And mm. in that moment, it, it really snapped me out of it. It was such a powerful question because like, well, in five years from time, I, I don't want to be like this. This sucks. Right. Mm. If I keep going like this, this is bad. So if I'm going to turn somewhere, then I need to turn in a forward direction. And it just made me think in that moment, I'm like, well, I've always wanted to travel. And I've never had the opportunity to travel. And I started thinking about it. And all these things that were a problem became a big advantage for travel because, hey, well, because that dude had run into the back of my car, um, well, you know, I, I, don't, I can get an insurance payout on that. No issues. Uh, because, you know, keeping this house, so I'm going traveling. I don't need the house anyway. I'll just rent it out and have tenants start paying things for me. Um, because I'm no longer in this relationship, well, great, I can, I can, you know, go and travel. She was never interested in traveling, so I can go and do this. So all of a sudden, all these things that were problems with that change of question, they were actually an advantage for me to go and do a new thing. Um, and it put me on a completely different path because I took that year out to travel. I did South America, New Zealand. The plan was to go for Australia, Asia, and then back home. But I stopped in Australia, you know, got work uh, here, earning way more money than I would have in the UK, mm. living a great lifestyle. And here we are, what is it like a decade and a half and I live in a beautiful country with an amazing wife and kids so yeah a question really helped me over that stress so sometimes we change the question or change the way we view a situation mm -hmm. everything can change all the possibilities and options change wow and there I guess you start with your first really great resource don't you the, that you recognize that yeah you, it, recognition is the key mm -hmm. um in, in any situation we can choose what we make something mean. In the beginning, I was making it mean like I'm hard done by, I'm a victim, you know, this is terrible. She shouldn't have done, she shouldn't have done this to me. It felt like it was done to me. Mm. And then when I chose a different meaning for the situation, the meaning was, hey, I have, I have freedom now, I have flexibility now, I have options, I have choice. Yes. The same situation becomes very different. So whatever is happening in your life, whatever the stress is right now, can you ask yourself that question? Like, what am I making this mean? Can I make it mean 
something different. And I like to think we have like this drop down menu of options in front of us and we can pick a different choice from the menu at any time. That's always available to us to, to pick a different meaning. I, I have young kids and I can make it mean, you know, when they're nagging me, they're being annoying, they're being challenging, they're being frustrating and I'm going to deal with it in one way. Or I can make it mean they're being curious. This is an opportunity for them to learn and grow and I'm going to respond to it in a very different way. So uh, so whatever's happening for you with your stress right now, yeah, ask yourself, what am I making this mean? Can I make this mean something different? So as you've gone on in life then and faced other sorts of challenges, is this still one of the main resources that you come back to? It's an important one because how we how we think about things impacts how we feel and then how we feel impacts the actions that we take and the results that we get so if i'm thinking about it in a way that doesn't work i'm not going to feel about it in the right way and i'm not going to take the actions it's not going to keep me on track so it's it's probably a fundamental uh basis to have our psychology right i'll, p- I'll pick another example to answer your question because hmm. i've done other things that have been stressful um through choice Right. So I've mm-hmm. chosen to run marathons and I ran a marathon on the Great Wall of China. Now it's physically demanding. Wow. Right? Yeah. Challenging. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> all those steps, they, they were pretty big steps for my little legs. I think we're built more for horses rather than that short people like me. But it was a physically challenging thing. And I think there's probably four or five things in there that are, are really important to be able to do something like that. I, I think about our work in business or in life is a marathon. It's, it's not a sprint. Mm. We're doing things for the longer term. So it probably makes a good metaphor. But number one is preparation. We, in anything we do, we, we don't rise to the level of our expectations. We fall to the level of our training. So oh. it's possible for me to go and run a marathon, anyone to run a marathon. I have a belief anyone can run a marathon, you know, within 16 weeks of training. Uh, there's a great book on it. There's a great resource available. You read this book, you follow the steps, you can get there, right? If, if you want to. So do the preparation. You've got to put your time on legs if you want to, you want to do that. If you want to get better at your marketing and your business, well, you have to practice that skill. You want to get better at sales, you have to practice that skill. So be prepared, be ready to, to do that. Um, number two is, is visualization. We may be in the challenge right now. It may be tough in our marathon. We may be going through the part where we're fatigued and we wonder what the hell are we doing? Why are we doing it here? But we have to have that visualization of, of that goal. What's it going to be like when we cross the finish line? If you can see yourself crossing the finishing line and feeling great, because the crowd's there, because you get your medal, because you have that feeling of accomplishment, that's going to be the, the power to keep you going. I um, heard someone say recently, you know, the obstacles uh, only come into sight when you take your eye off of the vision. So you've got to have a vision of where you're going to keep your eye on that. And if you don't have a vision for what you want to accomplish in, in your life or your business or, you know, right now, stop. Like just let's, let's get clear on that. What is the outcome? Where do we want to go? Um, uh, other thoughts on this for me running around, doing that distance, I had to have good self-talk. If I yeah. kept saying to myself, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. Well, guess what? I'm going to be tired. If I say to myself, Hey, I have maximum energy. You know, <laughs> one of the, one of the things I did say, uh, this is easy. This is easy. This is mm-hmm. easy. The legs are burning. I'd say, this is easy. This is easy. You know, after a while it begins to feel easy. I remember running training, running up some of these hills and had a visualization you know, saying this is easy and like almost like an elastic band pulling me up the hill. So it wasn't like a slog to get up there. I was, I was gradually being pulled and I was noticing the progress. The further I got to that goal, rather than saying I'm not there yet, I was noticing I'm, I'm getting closer. Every step I'm getting closer. Um, and that that's another really important thing. And sorry if I'm giving you too many, you just tell me to stop. No, but I think no, it, it's I'm, wonderful. I keep this journal with me everywhere I go. And it's a different, is a day, it's just like a day journal. I, got, I know every day. Every day I write down my wins. How did I progress? How am I moving forward? Because I might not be at that goal yet. I might not be at that vision yet. But every day I notice, well, what's the steps I've taken? How am I getting closer to that? Even in the worst days when things have gone wrong, I can always notice a win. And psychologically, that keeps keeps us on track. Now, I recognize this with business owners and entrepreneurs. As a group of people, we suck at this because we're always focusing on, I haven't done this yet, I haven't done that yet, and I've got this long list. But the more I get my clients to write down their wins every day and notice their wins, it keeps their psychology on track. They realize they're moving towards it. They can they can see the progress. Um, what else What else do I want to tell you about this? Um, I got another two or three things. Like for me, the soundtrack in your life, like listen to the music. For me, running, having good motivational music, pretty important. When I got to a really tough part to be able to, you know, click on the Rocky music or the eye of the tiger, you know, great. Mm-hmm. Help me, help me through it. Having the right uh, nutrition in your body, you know, really helps you get through. You've got to take care of your diet and your sleep. And I think finally um, on this topic, anchoring. So mm-hmm. the idea of anchoring, the idea is that when we um, do two things together, they can get wired up. 
And the, orig the original idea of this came from this um, study with Pavlov's dog. So they give oh. the dog food, ring a bell, give the dog food, ring a bell, give the dog mm. food, ring a bell. Now for the dog, one time they didn't put down the food, but they rang a bell. And guess what? Like he, his mouth began to salivate as if the food would be there. They wired those two things together in his brain. Well, the same thing can be true for us in everything that we do. When I was out running and doing practice runs before this marathon, anytime I felt great, had this amazing view, this amazing scenery, I would press my thumb and forefinger together. I oh. kept doing it. I kept building it. Every time I'd be running across the Sydney Harbour Bridge, amazing view. I'd be feeling strong as I, you know, ran through the street, I'd press it. And I kept doing this again and again and again. And then what happened this one time when I was running back across the uh, Sydney Harbour Bridge, I was towards the end of a two-hour training run. And this guy behind me, I, I guess he was out for a short run because he was going a bit quicker than me, but he overtook <laughs> me. And my um my competitiveness kicked in. I don't know if anyone else is competitive, but I got competitive. And I couldn't have him overtake me, so I overtook him. Then he overtook me. And then I overtook him. But now at this point, I'm going flat out. I don't know if you ever had that where you're running so hard, so fast, everything's in, like, stop, stop, stop. And But I couldn't because, you know, I was competitive. In that moment, I just pressed my thumb and my forefinger. And it was really interesting because... As I did that, all that energy came back from when I was feeling strong and great before. My shoulders kind of came out, my head came up, and I, I kept going. I got to the other side of the bridge. I turned around, that, that guy was nowhere to be seen. And so this is a, a bit of an idea for you. Like, I was doing that when I was running, but and I was anchoring it to feeling strong or feeling great. We can do the same thing with, with your existing emotional states. You know, for you to get through a stress, you know, a stressful time, if you can go back to a time where you felt confident or certain or resourced or strong if you can bring yourself back to that either by anchoring or you know or visualizing getting yourself back into that state it can make it very much easier to um to go through it so i'm sorry i've got a lot to talk about on this one so i'll pause and make sure uh, i'm not overcooking it with you <laughs> not at all no this is fantastic and i mean this is what this podcast is all about some really practical things um so that people can actually apply what what others have learned through challenges um, and you've given us two really great examples, firstly, of a challenge that, you know, has come in not by choice when you felt, you know, completely knocked off balance, which I think is more about um, particularly, you know, when people are in business and they get sued for the first time or they have a um, a staff member leave and claim unfair dismissal or something like that, or, um, you know, a separation um, and a financial split and it's a sudden and you just have to keep going in life somehow, but there's this overarching legal battle around it that could go for a long time. Um, and then some of the questions that I often find people ask is things like, you know, why is this happening to me? Why is everything happening all at once? All these sorts of questions as well. And like being able to turn those around and actually asking yourself a powerful question Um I mean, can just completely shift that focus, which is what's needed, isn't it? It, it is. And you hit, hit the nail on the head. And sometimes we ask ourselves those why questions mm. and it sends us internally looking for an answer we don't have. We don't know why the fiance mm. just chose to quit. We don't know why that company's cho chosen suicide. That, that wasn't part of our thinking. We don't know what's going on in their world. A more powerful question sometimes to ask is, is how how can I change this? How can I resolve this? How can I do this differently? You know, uh, or or even who, who's come through this problem? Who's already dealt with this issue? Now, in your situation, uh, Jackie, if someone is, uh, you know, suing someone else, you've mm. dealt with this situation a bazillion times. So you're the right who in, in terms of that legal context, you know, mm. and uh, estates, planning, those kind of pieces. Well, you're definitely the person, the who that people need to go to, go to and, uh, and find out about how to resolve that. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. And as you said, like instead of the whys, a who or a what or some other kind of question, um, just changing that focus. But the other thing I really loved was the visual visualization and, and looking at the outcome, because I think a lot of people always just focus on what has happened and all those things as well, <clears throat> rather than actually thinking of a positive outcome mm. in the future and what they'll do and what they're going to learn from this for the future too. Mm. exactly exactly clear on the outcome that you want and then there's normally a way to uh to get there there's normally a way to find it uh and if you don't have the skills then you can probably build the skills or get someone who can help you with the skills mm -hmm. it's hard when you are knocked off balance and it's not a challenge by choice uh to to then refocus and actually bring that preparation um because as you said when it's a, a challenge you choose you're actively then preparing for it 
Um, but it is something that if it's landed on you, that you can prepare yourself mentally, you can prepare your factual situation, you can prepare for whatever the next step is going to be rather than just thinking you're a victim to a, a process that you're now part of. Mm. And you hit the nail on the head there and it is your density and how you choose to see yourself. Um, mm. some, some people get stuck in this drama cycle where they get their needs met by being the victim. And mm. so they're, they're never going to look for a solution or to find a way out because actually, you know, they, as soon as they're a victim and something's done to them or they're having a bad problem or they get to go and get mm -hmm. loving connection from friends or family who, you know, who tell them it's not their fault and, you know, that they're great. And, and so they get their connection needs met by that. But it's not it's not the it's not a fulfilling way in the longer term it's an unresourceful way to to meet your needs so yeah if if you can find a way to step out of being a victim to uh being the victor or someone who's going to find a way and get a result it, it, mm. it can massively change the quality of your life mm. yeah i often think about that concept as well of being a victim because i think a lot i think it's triggering for a lot of people because they don't like to think that they think of themselves mm. that way um but even if they don't generally in their life i think that some of these big challenges put us into that frame of mind um, yeah. when we're not typically in it. And so actually acknowledging that as well, that, oh, well, you know, I am powerful in a lot of other aspects of my life, but because in this situation, this is happening to me, mm. um, I'm feeling like a victim, but you can switch that around too. Powerful questions then to switch that around. What could they do? <laughs> well, and it, there's a great one. Mm. what what if this isn't happening to me but this is happening for me right yeah. so if you feel like you're thinking it's happening to you well ask yourself the question what if it's happening for me go back to my original example mm -hmm. i thought this was happening to me this uh, you know mean fiance mm. you know the company you know guy running into the back of my car mm. all these things are happening to me but then when i realized no they're happening for me if it's happening for me i get flexibility i've always wanted to travel and i've never done it now is my chance yeah right so if this situation right now feels like it's happening to you, ask yourself, how could this be happening for me? How could this be to my advantage? Sometimes it's difficult to see in the situation, but mm -hmm. sometimes these things happen to you. So you learn a lesson. So you, you build a muscle or so you realize like, hey, well, I, I need to find a way around this. So this doesn't happen again. I need to go and build this new skill. Um, look at, you know, we're now a few years uh, from the start of the, the pandemic that we've all experienced. Yeah. For a lot of people at the beginning of that, the feeling was, oh, how is this happening to me? I have a lot of clients who lost all of their work overnight, which mm -hmm. is gone. Now, you know, years later, many of them say it was the best thing because yeah. they found another thing that they never would have gotten into. And that's going way better than the thing they had before. So it, at the time, it felt like it was happening to them, but really it happened for them. It gave them a new opportunity to find a new way to, to serve people, which is now even better than before. So yeah, what if it's happening for me, not to me? Mm, yeah, that's a really powerful one. Thank you. So, I mean, I've watched you over the years as well, reiterate yourself a few times. Um, what are you most passionate about at the moment? Uh, well, first and foremost, my, uh, my daughters and my family, my wife. So I have a, a four-year-old, six-year-old and uh, everything I'm, I'm, I'm doing is geared towards, you know, serving them. Now, it's interesting because my six-year-old really likes art and painting and drawing hey, I, i've hated it i've never been good at that stuff it's never my thing i dodged it at school as much as i could now because uh because i want to really connect with her and help her build her skills then I'm, I'm learning all sorts of things how to draw now how to to paint and it's really quite interesting when you uh open yourself up for new experiences like that it becomes quite helpful so no i'm not good with my arts but you can actually work out what i'm painting now is when i began uh you know you couldn't so bit by bit that helps um my work, of course, is my second passion. I work with a lot of business owners, helping them to maximize their profitability. When I was growing up, uh, you know, my dad was a manager of an electrical contracting firm. They came into recession and they, he he was an amazing technician at his job, mm -hmm. but he didn't have the skills or abilities to help do the marketing or get the sales in. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. that, that company went under. And of course, you know, that was a, a real problem for our family because that was our only source of income. It was a problem for all the other families that worked in that firm. So I think since that age, I probably had something internal, internally, I could maybe avoid to feel that I didn't ever want to go through that myself and I didn't want other people to go through it. So over the years, I've been helping, um, helping business owners. Uh, well, effectively now I, I tell them I help them to maximize their profitability. And a lot of people are interested in that. They'd like to have more profit or more cash flow. Um, but my real passion in that, of course, is 
is to help them and help their families. If I can help them change their psychology, change their mindset, and then we overlay the right marketing and the right sales approach or, or get the right model there, it can make a major, major difference, you know, on the quality of their life and the amount of people that they they serve and impact. That's number two. Um, and then the third, third thing I'm passionate about, as you get, we've, we've gone over the questions a few a few times and we've dropped in a few questions. I spend my time um, interviewing amazing people who have had success in life and trying to uncover how do they think? How do they think about these situations? What are the questions that they ask? How do they use these questions to improve the quality of their life? And and I do that on my podcast, which uh, I, I know you very kindly said before that, uh, you, that you still listen to. So, so thank you for that. <laughs> no, I, I really enjoy a lot of them. Um, there's always some wisdom to take. So well done for, you know, consistency with air. It's brilliant. Yes. Mm. Uh, episode 187 was recorded this week. So it's, yeah. it's been going for a while and it's, uh, it's, you can only continue to do things like that if you really love it. And, you know, I get so much value from it for myself, but it's, uh, it's, it's really great to put out there and, and have other people get benefit as well. Absolutely. So we've talked earlier and we called it having resources um, and and I guess these are skills and things that we can rely on to support ourselves um, through challenging times and self-care is often one of those. Um, so I wanted to ask you, particularly because it's not something that men I think often get asked, um, but what things do you do to you know, regularly check in with yourself to look after yourself and, you know, to see yourself through stressful times? Uh, thank you. It's, it's a great question. There's, there's all the common things like you ask people and there's going to be some common things. They're going to say to you that they do their exercise. They, you know, make sure they drink enough water. Mm. You know, we do all these things. Um, I think it's probably some more important things. We mentioned noting the wins, uh, counting your results and your progress. I can't underestimate how much of a difference that makes. Um, every night at dinner, and we've anchored this to dinner so we can't forget it. We go around the table and ask, what are you grateful for? Right now, our, our six-year-old and four-year-old, they've been doing this for two or three years now. So if I forget to ask, they're already asking and, and telling us. So you can imagine every time they're eating, they're focusing on what they're grateful for. Now, that's important because that builds a good feeling internally. Imagine at dinner time, you're noticing all the amazing things you have in your life. And then before you go to bed, you're writing down your wins. That's such a great way to tune your brain in. Um I can't underestimate those. I'm going to show you some some of the less common things that I don't hear other people say that I do that may be helpful. Um, number one, I had I had nasal surgery maybe a year and a half ago, and one of the things the surgeon had me do was do a nasal douche. So get like a salt water rinse and shoot it out one nose, shoot it out the other nose, and it it cleans things out. So not not the best image for you, but I've continued that because what it does it really keeps you very clear here. It means you are very less susceptible to, you know, getting colds or flus because if it all, um, I, don't know, I don't even know the right words here, if it all collects there and that's what causes you to be sick and you're cleaning that out, you know, on a, a regular basis, that helps. So it's a little bit less common, but I think it, it it can make a major difference. I rarely get sick and I think that's a part of it. Um, part of improving the breathing, if you want to have better energy, a lot of people, uh, because of the way we live our lives, have become mouth breathers. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we don't get the quality of air or the depth of air that we get, and we end up feeling lower energy. So one thing that I've been practicing, <laughs> it's harder to do, is trying to just breathe from my nose the whole time. So for some people, that's natural. For me, it never was, because I had some things in there where there are blockages. And part of doing that to improve that, one of these self-care habits is taping the mouth at night. And it forces this breathing through the nose. And I... I um, if you want to know more about the detail, this is a great book um, by Nestor called Breathe, Breathe or Breath. I'm not sure. I'm not sure the name of the book. And he goes through the science of this and why this is so important. We have more filtration through our nose than we do for our mouth. So we get better quality of air through our nose. We need to breathe less to get, you know, uh, the same, you know, the same quality of oxygen in there. So mouth taping at night. The third, third one that I'll share with you as well um, is cold showers and ice baths. So part of this book, he spoke about breathing. And one of the things he spoke about in there was this guy called Wim Hof. And you may have heard of him, the ice man. He's very popular. I honestly, the idea of cold showers or ice baths, mm. I'm like, nah, no thanks, not interested. Mm. I go down to the beach, um, you know, on the height of summer, it's like 20 plus degrees in the water. It's still too cold for me. Mm -hmm. But I went along to this course to understand the breathing because I knew that was going to make a difference to my energy and my immune system. Mm. And of course, they were doing ice baths. And you see all these people there getting into the ice baths and they just get in, you know, for two and a half minutes, relax there like it's oh. some uh, some hot bath and they seem pretty chilled. 
no, no, no. I get in and it was agony. It was the most pain I'd ever experienced in my life in my hands, in my feet. And I was, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. and so it was very challenging, but here's the interesting thing. The first day we did two and a half minutes and the next day he said, you can do five minutes. I was anxious, so anxious all day, but I did the five minutes. And so every week now uh, on Sunday morning, I get up and, and I do the breathing and I do the ice bath and Every, every week is hard. Some weeks my wife um, you know, comes in and asks if I'm delivering a baby or something because I make that much noise as I get in there. And it's never glamorous. And that's why you never see any pictures of me doing this online because I look, look a mess. However, when I come through the other side, I think it gives two real solid benefits. One, it, it boosts your immune system and your energy. Um, and number two, there's a psychological thing here. When it's freezing cold and you don't want to have that cold shower or you don't want to get into the ice bath and you still do it and you still do that hard thing, it builds up a resilience in you that when you think about things in your business, your life, and they feel hard, you know you can do this ice bath. You know you can take on this cold shower. So, of course, I can take on this challenging thing of writing the book or having this awkward conversation. It builds a level of um, level of confidence in there. And why did I share it Like my, you know, mostly is because I think there's a health benefits from it. I went to the start of that course. I had this tennis elbow. And it was so painful and I couldn't, um, couldn't pick up the kettle without it hurting. I had physio, I'd had, you know, um, bone therapy. It didn't fix it. I went into this course for a weekend with the breathing, the ice baths. It's been fine ever since. Right. So there's, there's a real power into it. So yeah. So nasal douche, tape your mouth at night, do uh, cold showers and ice baths and, uh, yeah. And it will help in many ways. <laughs> Those are some fascinating ones. I have tried the mouth taping because I read that book too. Um, and yeah, fascinating stuff, but I've never been able to bring myself to do the, you know, the minute of cold at the end of the shower or anything like that. Um, even though I know all the health benefits that they talk about. And of course, if we, you know, apply these things and have better health, we have a better baseline so that when we're in stressful times, um, we've got more to call on. Um, so I do encourage people to give it a go if, you think that that's something you can tolerate? <laughs> well, I encourage you to give it a go if you think it's something that you can't tolerate. So if you think that you can, it's actually a belief. Right? Now, I I say this from this side now because I would be the biggest advocate of this. Someone challenged me to do it and I tried it. I couldn't. I, I had such a reaction, an immediate like, <gasps> mm. and the breathing went out. But what I realized is that if I could get under there, for you know 30 seconds and regulate my breathing focus on taking calmer deeper breaths mm. i can actually do it once i go about 30 seconds to a minute it was fine after that right now this time of year in australia is the worst time because we're winter so the water is even colder mm. but as you if you listen to this as you get into the warmer months it becomes a little bit easier but once you start doing that and know that you can get through that first first minute and regulate your breathing you become fine after that your body adjusts to it and changes but it's having that one minute of bravery to stand under there even even though your brain is telling you get out this hurts get out if you can if you can regulate your breathing and stand over there it gets it gets easier and i think that's true for a lot of the things that we have in life and in business you know the fear or the inertia is the bigger thing but once you start you get into momentum it becomes easier after that so uh look i, I don't i don't want to be a, a cold shower or ice bath advocate you know if, if it's not your thing don't don't do it if it's going to make you miserable don't do it but if uh if you want to challenge yourself then hey why not give it a go see if you can i love that analogy at the end i think that that's so true so i'll let you know how i go with the cold showers okay cool I'll, uh, <laughs> where are, you, are you doing it tomorrow do you want to do you want to set a reminder <laughs> sure <time>? i'll let <laughs> you know <laughs> i'm sorry this, this is a coach of me i'll uh <laughs> <laughs> i'm up for it it's good um Look, Kevin, thank you so much for sharing so many things and so much of your time and wisdom. Where can people find you if they want to connect, to listen to your podcast, um, to follow you, anything else that you want to refer people to? Oh, yeah, thank you so much. If you're interested in understanding, you know, around life-changing questions or hearing some of the amazing people that I interview, and I've had some some really uh, world-class people, then you can anywhere in... Uh, Spotify or iTunes, you go to life changing questions and you'll you find me there. Um, if you are in business and you would like to be making some more profitability, then I've put together some free resources that, you know, that it, it's taken me a long time to learn these and is a massively valuable um, product. So you go to profit 
dot gifts. So G I F T S. So these are my gifts to you. And in there, you'll, you'll be able to find you know, a report and the report has probably got like 125 questions in there. You answer these questions, you're going to see where the gaps and the opportunities are in your business. I've had people tell me that it has made them, you know, thousands and tens of thousands by going through that, that book and using that, or there's some, some videos up there, you know, also walking through it. So yeah, either of those places. So uh, profit.gifts or, uh, or look for life-changing questions and, uh, or find me on LinkedIn. I'd be more than happy to, uh, to connect with you and, and see how I can serve you. Wonderful. You are just so packed full of value. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thanks for your time and so brilliant to connect again. Hey, my pleasure entirely. Thank you so much. I, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed the time. Thank you.